before we get to the playing the game, I want to point out how the basic Sonic Adventure DX looks. Um, basically, it's like this, where it's it's layer boxed, and you've got these blue line bars. I think maybe there's an option for black, but when I played it originally, it had like these blue bars on the side, and it's like you know four by three. Um, that's the way the game looks naturally. I went after playing it for a bit, you know, I noticed there was some frame rate issues and stuff. Uh, if you come into here and download uh, this this mod right here, Better Sonic Adventure DX, Better SADX, uh, it's very easy to do. It's just a simple download a file and install it. And I, it gets updated, like there was even an update I had to download during the time I played the game. Um, but basically it just, uh, it fixes a lot of uh, graphical stuff. It um, it changes the uh, it changes it to be widescreen. There's there's even like uh, cheats that you can activate if you really want to. Yeah, there are a lot of good um, fixes in here, and uh, I just wanted to point that out that this review is going to be assuming you download this because this fixes a lot of uh, technical issues that uh, come with it being a, a poor port in the first place. But this this fixes a lot of things. So let's go ahead and get into the game. Now when you when you launch, there's like configure Sonic Adventure DX. This is always here. If you don't have the mod installed, it'll take you to its own configuration screen. But when the mod is installed, then you get this little thing up here. So you get all these mods, I think should be on by default. Um, then there's codes in here that you can like turn on invincibility if you really want to. Um, Infinite rod tension, we're gonna to get to that. That is for Big the Cat, which I did use uh, after I beat the game. I used it for his uh, extra missions. Let's go ahead and get into it now. Save and play. Sega. Sonic T. So this is Sonic Adventure DX. You can have multiple save files, although, you know, I don't know necessarily... I mean, if, I guess if you if you want, you can have multiple save files. And you can delete it right there if you want. But let's go ahead and get into here. So there are these three main ones right here is what we're going to talk about. First is Adventure. This is the story mode. Let's go ahead and get into here. Just go into Sonic. So the way this game is structured is that you have multiple characters to choose from, and when you pick a character, you play through their story. And so, as Sonic, uh, he has the most levels in the game. His controls are simply that, you know, you can move around, you walk around at first, if you keep holding the stick, you go faster, eventually, you know, you come to a stop, you eventually just keep holding the stick in a direction and you'll go faster. Sonic can also do a spin dash. If you hold the uh, attack button there, you can go very fast. In fact, that's key for some speedrunning stuff. You can also do like a, a spin dash jump if you want to clear a, a pit. That's kind of an advanced tech. You don't necessarily have to do that anywhere, but it is helpful for doing um, uh, time trial challenges. But this is the hub world, so to speak, or the overworld. You've got this town here. You can go up and go to um, the Mystic Ruins. And then there's also, eventually, later in the game, you can go to Eggman's ship. Those are the three main places to look at. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to go over here to play through a level. This is going to be my example level. This is stage two, Windy Valley. So the basic goal here is to simply just get to the end. Now you collect rings, of course, and um, if you get hit when you have rings, these enemies here will hit me, then you lose your rings. You can pick them back up, but if you get hit with you don't have rings, you die. You lose your life. So that's, that's the basic of any Sonic game. But let's go ahead and look at one of uh, Sonic's main abilities in his 3D games. Or at least in this game. Um, is that his homing attack. If you press the jump button again when you're in the air, you'll home in on a target, 
If it's an enemy, that's great. If it's an object like these, you know, you'll just automatically go towards them. I'm gonna have to press the control stick here, although press the control stick can be a good thing if you have multiple targets you're looking at. Now what I just picked up here is an electric shield. It'll allow me to take one more hit before I lose any rings. It also doubles as a ring magnet. This is a checkpoint, so if I die, I will restart here. But yeah, as you can see, uh, the ring magnet effect of this shield draws the rings into me. This is like an automated section. Oh wait, no! I shouldn't have stopped holding forward. There are a lot of sections where if you just hold forward, the game kind of just plays, like right here. Like I'm not changing direction or anything, I'm just holding forward. But this is um, what most of the platforming looks like. There's kind of big jumps, but you have a very floaty jump, so you can stay in the air for quite a long time. I missed that little heart thing there. This is also kind of on mid right here. But eventually you do get to like a different part of the stage. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna get out of platform here. There's these orb things, these light balls. If you hit them, they'll kind of give you tutorials on what to do next if you don't know. This is obviously just a, like a trampoline thing. So Sonic is, of course, uh, the main character in this game, and he has the most levels. He's got 10 different levels. They're all kind of about, uh, I guess the later levels are a bit longer. I was going to say that they're all about the same length, but uh, not necessarily true. And you can see Tails is following me around. He's just there, just because classic Sonic games had Tails following you around, so they just kept it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so not at the beginning of the game, but later, um, Sonic gets the ability to hold his charge and, like, get that. And what this does is that if there's a line of rings and you let go, Sonic will just fly through all those rings to the end. And so that is good for a game to like place like this where there's like an extra life, you know, little bonuses, just to keep your eyes out for things like that. And as you can see, I'm kind of bouncing around. The controls and physics of this game can be a little wonky at times, but Nothing seriously game-breaking. Fortunately, I cannot get Tails to fly me up anywhere in this game. I'm gonna run through here. Whoa, 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 did you see that? I was almost about to run off the side of that ledge and kill myself. That would not have been good. We're gonna land down here and almost at the end of the level. But the story is pretty simple, but it is broken up between all the characters. As you play each different character, you get their perspective on where they are when the story is happening. Uh, the basic story is that uh, Dr. Eggman, or Robotnik, as he's the last, the last time he's called Robotnik in the Sonic games, this one I believe, um, he is just, he's got this chaos monster. It's just called Chaos, it's this blue monster that uh, he's feeding Chaos Emeralds to to make stronger, and you're just out there to stop him from doing that. Now the first time you beat these levels, you'll see like a statement that says like Mission C cleared. Yeah, not bad. And that will be explained a bit later when I get to Trials. So as you can see here, there's like a bunch of different areas you can go around. Um, these areas get unlocked as you progress through the story. I'm just kind of spinning around, so like here's like an ice level in here. I mean, it's kind of like a hub world, um, but you do, I guess you do a, a few things out here. It's mostly just level choosing, like there's a level in there. Um, there are a few secrets to find. There are these things called emblems, which we'll uh, talk about. And then um, you've got a map you can look at to see where I am. There is a camera function, so the camera will be on auto, and I think it's best to have it on auto, but you can switch to free cam. 
if you do that, you know, the camera won't uh, automatically shift around for you, but it'll stay right behind you for the most part. And then if you use the right stick, you can rotate around you. If you have the camera on auto, um, auto cam, which is what I leave it on most of the time, uh, as you can see, it will, it will zoom out for some next stuff. But if you use the right stick now, it actually goes to like almost like a first person view. You can get like a closer look at some things. So yeah, that is the gist of that. Let's go ahead and go back out to the menu here. Trial mode here. If you take a look, get three different things. The emblem results. Uh, there's all these emblems you can, they're like extra goals you can take on. There's also some hidden out in the, in that open world field. Not open world, but you know, the adventure field that, that they call it. There's just a few just sitting out to be found in hidden areas. There's some minigame related, chow racing, and uh, final level stuff. But they are done through these action stages, so if I go back into Sonic again, you can see there's these emblems here to the side. And in fact, they all have different goals. The first one is just complete the level. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I can actually read what they were here. So every character has like their own set of levels to do. And they all go through that world select, that adventure field to find things. Um, but if we go into Tails, as you can see here, he has only five levels in total. In fact, his first level is Windy Valley, that one that we just played as Sonic. And all of Tails' levels are just like racing Sonic, but because Tails can fly, is the, that's, that's the only reason why Tails can really beat Sonic. Because, I mean, Sonic is the fastest character in the game, but Tails can fly, which allows him to take shortcuts like this. And so you can see, this is Tails' whole level. He has um, an abbreviated version of Sonic's level. Like he doesn't go through all th all the parts that Sonic did. He just goes through kind of like the last part. It looks like here. Whoops! I just hit that. Come on, here we go. So yeah, these are all of Tails' levels that he just kind of is supposed to just race Sonic to the finish of a portion of his level. And that's kind of the thing. Sonic has all ten levels, and then all the other characters have, like, parts of his levels broken up into their own levels. And that little badge on Tails' chest there, that's like one of those... It's like upgrades that you can get for your characters that are hidden in the adventure world. Some of them are required to that progress the story. Some of them are optional that just so give you extra benefits. Here. Knuckles okay. is uh, more different. He goes so through levels. Um, Sonic has all these levels to, as well, but what Knuckles is supposed to do is he's supposed to find parts of the Master Emerald. They're basically shards around. If you look down at the bottom of the screen, there are those little icons down there. They're going to start flashing when I get near one. So if I just keep going around, these things might give me some hints. Oh, there's two nearby. Probably one in here. Yeah, there's one. But there's another one that's also nearby, as you can see. It's kind of like a hot and cold kind of deal. Wait, oh, it's right down there. This thing is trying to hit me. But yeah, Knuckles can float around. He can't like ascend with his abilities, but he can like hover down. Got like police cars coming after me. Oh, there's a spring there. There we go. So yeah, we just keep going around, kind of waiting for that uh, radar to start going off. Should be something around here, right? Oh, in circles. Oh, there it is. So 
So yeah, that is what Knuckles does. He's got all those stages that are just like that. Now, in trial mode, uh, there are three like difficulty levels, three different missions to uh, accomplish for the emblems. Going back to Sonic real quick, uh, he's got three. The first one, of course, I said earlier, is just get to the level. The second one is get to the end of the level with 50 rings, which is to suggest don't get hit as much, or try not to get hit, try to save some rings for the end. 50 rings is very short, actually. It's very easy. You get 50 rings like just in the final stretch of most levels, just because rings are so plentiful. The third one, though, is beat it within a certain amount of time. I think the first one was actually like two minutes, which is very quick. But most of the levels, they have like different times. Casinoopolis, I think, was five minutes you have. But yeah, you have to get to the end of the level within a certain amount of time. And those ones are actually difficult. Those ones are actual legit Select challenges that I found. Amy, she has the fewest number of levels. She actually has three. All three of them are kind of simple, just get to the end of the level, but her deal is that she has this robot chasing her the entire time. Well, not the entire time, most of the time. There he is. There's the robot. So he's going to be attacking me. He's going to be chasing me throughout the whole level. I mean, it's not like if he touches me once I'm dead or anything, but uh, he's just going to be a constant nuisance. And I can't attack him, actually, because I've got this hammer. Now, Amy, she's the second slowest character, I think. Of course, I just got a, a speed boost. Maybe she is the slowest. I don't know, I thought Big was the slowest. But maybe Amy's the slowest, I'm not sure now. But Amy's deal, if she's running and her, she pulls her hammer out, that means she's running at top speed. And when she's running at top speed, she can hit the attack button to do a flip which gives her like a high jump as well as I think some, it's a good way to, to make a jump at least. Oh, right. I was looking at the wrong Amy there. There are some trick floors in here, like this one's gonna fall if I uh, step on top of it. No! Okay. If I was running and I hit the attack button, I would have done my flip, but since I wasn't going fast enough, I just did that, which stops me in my tracks, which is why I fell. So let's go ahead and quit, go on to the next person. Uh, E102. So he's a little different as well because his levels... Let's go ahead and go back to Windy Valley again just to see how it's like the same stage but different. He has this laser targeting system where he will shoot stuff. And if you get combos, you can see there's time added. That one second, that's time getting added. Like right here, if I combo this, I'm going to get... Look at that. 40 seconds is going to be added back on to my timer, so my timer is counting down, and I want it to not reach the end. Oh, I just got an invincibility. Not that I need it. So his his deal, why can't I go through here? His deal is that he's going, he's kind of turned against uh, Dr. Eggman since, uh, oh dang, since, um, I don't know, he met Amy and she kind of convinced him to be good, which is why he's turned against Dr. Eggman. He's going out after the other robots and he's freeing them from him in a way that uh, it makes sense in Sonic lore because Dr. Eggman, he turns animals into his robots. And so by destroying the robot, he frees the animal inside. Uh, all the bosses in Son in this game are pretty easy. This one is laughably easy because I'm just going to sit here and shoot him. That's it. But I think all the bosses in this game are pretty easy. Even the main, even the ones against the main uh, enemy chaos, uh, they require you to wait around, you know, wait for the for those weak point and all that. But most of the other bosses are pretty easy. 
Oh yeah, and those rings that get added to my total, that 7,000 that I have, that is showing the total uh, rings that I've gotten in all the levels, which I can use those rings totaled for the Chow Garden, which we'll also talk about. Uh, Metal Sonic is something you unlock for getting all the emblems, which is just a reskin of Sonic. It's like all the same Sonic levels. Uh, Big the Cat. Let's go ahead and get into here. I probably should have turned off the, uh, the cheat I have, the infinite tension. Basically, Big's stages are not like platforming at all, they are simply fishing. So you're supposed to come in here, catch the frog. That's that's your main buddy. Just come in here and catch the frog, which is not at all thrilling. Where is he? Where is he, really? Oh, there he is. You gonna pay attention to this at all? There we go, he's turning around. So if I didn't have this cheat on, on the right side there, there would be a meter that goes up and down based on the pole that the uh, fish or frog is pulling. And basically if it gets too high you lose them and you die for some reason. But uh, because I have infinite tension on the meat bar never goes up, which means I can just fish it in because I don't want to do this fishing basically. And some of the harder missions, when he does his uh, trials, his different levels of fishing trials are just catching a single bigger fish every time. And the highest fish, the heaviest fish to catch, they are a, an annoyance to try to go through. Um, but yeah, there's like some mini games, which are just... There are these extra little missions. These... Oh, I guess there's like a boss thing. This is the racing thing. These are some like snowboarding and sandboarding areas, and then there's like a sky chase act, which is kind of like a Star Fox level, but very uh, short and cheap. You just kind of fly around on Tails' plane, and if you hold down the attack button, you can auto target stuff and make a combo. So if I target those three things right there, I can shoot them all. But again, there's only two levels like this, so I mean, it's just a very small portion of it. And you're chasing down Eggman's ship up there. A mission is... I'll just go ahead and use um, Tails for this one. Mission is going back into the hub world of the game. And there are these uh, mission cards around the map. And it gives you a description of some kind of mission to do. Now we just picked up mission four. It just says weeds are growing all over my place. I must get rid of them. It doesn't tell you where it is you're supposed to do that. There's just some grass there. You're supposed to use this ability to uh, cut the weeds. It's very vague. I don't like how vague it is. Um, also, this mission card only shows up for Tails because it's uh, his mission. You can see there's a little color coding at the top here. This yellow one is for Tails. You know, like reds for Knuckles, pinks for Amy, stuff like that. If I were to come here with any other character, that mission would not. That mission card would not be here. And so that. That reminds me actually of Donkey Kong 64 and how it's criticized for having everything be so segregated where you have to explore the entire game. Basically you have to play every level in that game with every character so it kind of repeats really uh, easily. Wait a minute, are the weeds actually here? This is Tails' workshop. So yeah, you um, cut all these weeds. These are just missions for mission's sake. And if you're playing on Steam, you know, you get like uh, an achievement. I assume if you're on PlayStation, you get a trophy. Anywhere else, I don't think it does anything. Oh yeah, I think there's some weeds inside the, the water here. It doesn't make much sense to me. Where's the last one? There we go. Mission clear. And that's what it is. That's what most of. That's what all these things are. There are these different missions that you have to pick up the mission with the right character, and then you have to go do it. And some of them are in like some of the stages, so you have to like go into the stage and do it. Uh, some of the, I guess they're in order of difficulty, I'd say. But really, I think those missions should be implemented into the main game in the adventure mode. Like, why is it in a separate thing? It would be more practical if they were in the adventure mode. Then you would pick them up and go get them. Uh, this mini game collection. This is as you get emblems, you unlock these old Game Gear games. So like Sonic the Hedgehog, this isn't the original Sonic the Hedgehog you're going to be thinking of, this is the Game Gear version. 
Yeah. And I'm not sure if these are in the actual um, uh, Steam version of this game. I think, I, I know they were in the GameCube version. They might have been removed for the Steam version, but then the, the mod just adds them back in. Now the Chow Garden is something that uh, you can only get to by going there on the map. There's a bunch of different places you can go to get to the Chow Garden, but uh, basically there's one in every part of the, uh, the main open world area. But this is one of them. So here you, you have this Chow, this is what it is. I need mine credo. Basically what you do is you raise it, you give it all these stats. What I did is I used those rings that I got from all the stages to buy from the market here. Um, this... Uh, well, there's a chow fruit. It's blue. Not this blue, but it's lighter blue. It's called chow fruit, and it gives it a bunch of stat boosts. So what you can do is, is buy these things here, and then you come out here to your, your chow. If I can find mine. It's around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. He's swimming. Hold on, let me put that down. Come out of the water. Pick this back up and feed it to him. If he eats it, sometimes it'll just throw away because he doesn't want to eat it. In which case, I just force it back on him. But if he eats it, let's see, is it gonna do anything? It doesn't seem to be doing anything for his stats. But yeah, he'll throw it away. And then you just you can just give it back to him if you really want. But uh, basically, the other ones would give him stat boosts, and the mod also includes a way for those stat boosts to just be higher. Oh no, I don't think I know. I don't think I know what I just gave him. I don't think I should have given him that. Anyway, you come over here, and you have a chow race. Now the only thing in this game is chow racing. So you just come in here. You pick which one you want. You can have multiple chow in your garden. And you just pick like a race. And there's different races. The different races re um, ask you to do different things. It's all just about who gets to the end first, but like this one I think is about strength because there's this ball in your lane which you're supposed to just push to get through. And you don't control anything in this game. You're just a spectator. The game is completely decided by your your Chow's stats, so you have nothing to do once the race begins. And I'm gonna win just because my, my power is higher than those of the others. But yeah, other races have like, there's like a swimming section, there's a climbing section. If it's just like a straight foot race, then you know, you need speed. But yeah, there's emblems to be gotten and an achievement for getting all these uh, Chow races won. You know, just something else to do in the game. If you go over here, you can, uh, actually if you take your chow over here, you can rename it. This, in the GameCube version, this is a way you can connect it to your Game Boy Advance. In which you can train your chow on your Game Boy. These are other parts. Um, these will take you to the other chow gardens. It's like this is the one in the Mystic Ruins, obviously, because it looks like it's it's got Mystic Ruins. I think the gardens all come with these eggs. And you just kind of, uh, you can shake them. I'm holding the action button and, and pressing just in any direction to uh, shake it. I wonder if I can force it open. There we go. Look at that, a chow. You can pet it. Oh, the other one hatched while we weren't looking. When you complete all the stories for all the characters, you eventually unlock the Super Sonic, which is like the final act. It's like the actual conclusion of the game, so after you beat all the other character stories, you get like a final uh, chapter, final boss fight. Uh, Big is actually pretty pointless in this game because he hardly interacts with any of the characters. He, his gameplay is uninteresting, so I mean, he could be removed from the game and no one would notice, I think. And that is pretty much the game. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.